Peace and Black Power family, you know what it is. August 28th is going down. A powerful tribute to Dr. Sabi at the Alhambra Ballroom. Make sure you have your ass in the building. I mean, all the teachers is going to be there. All the scholars is going to be there. This is your time to come on in and hang out with your family. It's going down. Make no mistake about it. Queen of Four, Red Pill, KT the Arts Degree, Phil Valentine, um, Blue Pill, Red Pill. I mean, you name it, Brother Polite. It's all going down, family, and much, much more. You don't want to miss out on this. Also, don't forget about the news band, family. See, right now, we could have been in Oakland. We could have been over there seeing what's going on. Family, this is very important to us, and it should be important to you. Support. The GoFundMe link will be on this video. Handle your business. Get us out there. We need this support from the people in order to make this happen. Peace. And Black Power family, Shaka Upmost, rest in peace. Morris Science Temple of America, so says Shaka Upmost. All right, let's get it in. A whole lot of people getting debunked. That includes Ali Muhammad. That includes West, Dr. Wesley Muhammad, whom I totally respect. And, and that includes Lord Abba. Um, that includes um, the baby face. <laughs> Imam <laughs> Bashir, right? That includes all the Allah lovers out there. All the Allah lovers today, um, I got something special for you. And, and I hope you're paying attention. I told them more as they didn't want it. I told them more as they didn't want it. I told them more as they didn't want it. with this PowerPoint, RIP to the Morris Science Temple of America. When you come at them with scholarship, goddammit, they start crying. They start the bull hooing. They start saying, what are we going to learn or how we going to do, what we going to do for our people with this teaching? They start the bull hooing. So all I want to say is, you shouldn't have nothing for this problem. <laughs> Pledging allegiance to the American flag Standing in front of an American flag Red, white, and blue right there They even wearing red, white, and blue Look gonna get it. Let's get it popping. They wanna claim all of this comedic stuff, but everything I showed you just came from from here. You're lost. There you go. The miseducated and the misguided. Further miseducating our women and our children. That's what's going on. They telling you about that circle seven Quran being um uh 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 Allah guided um a noble Jew Ali. But now you know who Allah is because your brother Shaka almost showed you. I'm not showing you that picture to disrespect you. These are my people up here. But I got a bunch of morons miseducating them. You understand? All you do.
doing it, you're no different than the Hebrew Israelites. Dealing with a culture you know nothing about because none of you have done any real research. You think it's all about treaties. Like this white man got what he got because of treaties. Ask the Native American who you also claim to be. Y'all want to be everything but African. Y'all want to be, we the Natives of America. We the indigenous of America. We are the Moors. We from Israel. Y'all want to be everything but Africa because you hate yourselves. You hate yourself. All of you, each and every one of you, hate yourselves. You are Africans. Take that goddamn Assyrian shit off your head. Fuck wrong with you people. All right, why this topic? Why this topic? Um, to be quite honest, I don't even remember. Oh, I think how it all started was Brother Reggie was preparing for his debate um, against the Moors. What's the brother's name? Sharif? Right? He was preparing for his debate with Sharif. At the time, you claimed, you asked me to come and give an interview, and I did. And in that interview, I made certain statements about the Moors. Yes? Yes. Um, yeah, I made certain statements about the Moors. And in fact, some of the Moors got so upset that one of our Moorish brothers, Red Pill, whom I love and respect as our brother, he came straight over to the studio. Do you remember that? Because he wanted to address what was being said. And at that time, we sat on the couch and we looked through some things. Um, and I went to Wikipedia. And just to do a quick cursory a um, little bit of research on the Moors and who they and, and to try to contrast it with who they say they are or how they represent themselves. And so it seemed like one more after another had something to say about me. It's always about me. It's never about what I say. They want to talk about my lot. They want to talk about my music videos. They want to talk about everything other than what I say. They never want to talk about the science and the history and the facts or the knowledge. They want to talk about everything else, which tells me what I need to know. Right? So... Uh, eventually, one of the Moors uh, from the Moors Science Temple of America, uh, who calls himself Tahaka Bay, which I can't help but laugh. You need to get just call yourself Bay Bay, you know, like Bay Bay's kids. Just get rid of the Tahaka part, cause nah, that that don't fly. Nah, bro, that that nah, <laughs> nah, bro, <laughs> that that don't fly. So um, I got something special for that brother because he made a video about me. So um. Uh, uh, yeah, the video was, was it was kind of cute. You know, he said some things about Shaka. He kept saying, Shaka, get your facts. Get, your, um, get some facts. Or get your scholarship up. That's what he kept saying. Get your scholarship up. Remember you said that. Right. Get your scholarship up. So, I said, okay. Let me go get my scholarship up. <laughs> so today, we're going to see just how up I got my scholarship. Okay? So, and, and mind you, this is just a crumb. What you're going to get today is a crumb. I'm not even sharing the rest with you yet. All right? What you're going to get today is just a small little crumb. That's it. Okay? Because it's just the first thing that caught my eye. I'm going in order through your whole thing. And when I'm done, each video that I do is going to be a manifesto for generations who are coming to fact check Moors. So when they come in our community with that bullshit, they're getting, they getting fact-checked right there on the spot. All they're going to have to do is go to a Shock Our Most music video, R.I.P. The Moore Shines Temple of America. Real talk. And I'm not saying that with disrespect, the whole R.I.P. part, but falsehood has to be laid to rest. You understand what I'm saying? Real talk so that my art can live, so that my art can stand up. You know, and, and, and helping my art to stand up. We have people in our communities who are continuing the miseducation process. And they wear feathers on their heads. Red feathers. You understand what I'm saying? With, with, with a tassel on the side. And, um, and you know, one minute they want to be Africans. Next minute they don't want to be Africans. Next minute they, you know, they want to, they got a whole different thing that they're trying to push. And it's like, look. You know, those of us who have some responsible scholarship in the community, we got to address it. We got to say, hey, look, you can't be miseducating the babies. You know, I would like to think that our sister Corinne Gaines wasn't under that Moorish dumb shit. You understand what I'm saying? 
Um, uh, you understand what I'm saying? Classifying herself as a Moor, and then she's therefore a sovereign citizen of a Mexum with their retarded shit. You understand what I'm saying? So we do have some responsibility to set the record straight, such as a noble Jew Ali. Um, now, mind you, there were there were um, there were authentic efforts. Okay, I mean genuine efforts for people or by people to try to reconnect our minds to that which it was severed from because of slavery. Some of the names that I named were people who made real efforts. I think what you have was just, let's create two categories. You had those people who genuinely tried to reestablish our minds to reconnect them to our African past. And then you have what I call opportunists. Those people who wanted to reconnect our minds to something, but then assume authority over us at the same time. That's how you can usually tell the difference between who was real and who was not. Those people who were really trying to reconnect our minds never tried to assume any authority over us because they respected our minds too much to do that. That's how you could tell when somebody got your best interest. If you look at those people who tried to reconnect our minds but yet at the same time assume authority over us, that should tell you what they were about. They were never about reestablishing your mind. They were about authority and control, mind control, religion. That's what they were about. And unfortunately, Noble Jew Ali has to be put in the second category. Those who tried to reestablish, those who tried to reconnect our, or those who tried to connect our minds to something, but at the same time assume authority over us. You understand what I'm saying? But let me name some of the names that tried to reconnect our minds that didn't try to assume authority over us. Which tells me that they had a more honest agenda, a more respectful agenda. We can, we can start with uh, 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 W.E.B. Du Bois. W.E.B. Du Bois, he, he, he went out of his way to reconnect our minds. But he didn't try to assume authority over us. And the only person, the only person whom I will grant um, an exception to, the only person in this capacity that I will grant an exception to is the Honorable Messiah Marcus Garvey. That's it. That's it. Why? Because we know that his love for us was genuine. We know it. Undoubtedly, without a shadow of a doubt, his love for us and his respect for us was genuine. He tried to reconnect our minds to something that he knew was us, and that was land, Africa. That's what he stood for, Africa, for the Africans at home or abroad. Whether you live in Harlem, Baltimore, California, Texas, Detroit, or Ghana, or South Africa, or Mauritania. Africa for the Africans, at home and abroad. He's the only one who I will grant that exception to. But all the rest of them were opportunists. This is my perspective. Okay? Now, hold on, hold on, right, right, go here. At the end of the day, so when slavery ended, Oh, not just, um, so I named William Leo Hansberry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. W.E.B. Du Bois was one of those people who tried to reestablish our minds, or tried to reconnect our minds to our legitimate past. Read his works, uh, Africa and the World, right? And other books by W.E.B. Du Bois. Du Bois. W.E.B. Du Bois was able to do what he did because he read books that was never, it was, he read books that were writ written that were never intended to be read by Africans. All of the books that he read that was in the library of Harvard University was not written for black people to read. It was not written for the sons and daughters of slaves or for ex-slaves. It was written for white people trying to educate and inform other white people. So it wasn't like they were trying to hide something from 
themselves. You understand? Or hide something from us. They never expected probably for any black person to ever make it to Harvard. Okay? How's that? Oh, okay, cool. No problem. No problem. Right? So I'm going to put this here for a second. Right? And I'm, I'm talking about this because we're going to get to identity wars. I want you to see what this PowerPoint is about. And I don't want to just take you in cold. So William, uh, uh, W.E.B. Du Bois was one of those people that tried to reconnect our mind. But he didn't try and assume authority over us. Okay? Uh, another one, Carter G. Woodson, the creator of Black History Week, which became later on extended to Black History Month. Carter G. Woodson also went to Harvard to read the same books that the boys got his hands on. These are people who tried to authentically reestablish and reconnect our minds to that which it had been severed from. But have you read their works? Have you read Du Bois? Have you read Carter G. Woodson? The Negro in History. Have you read them? Right? And who is their protege after that? William Leo Hansberry. Another black man who attended Harvard. Made all kinds of sacrifices to do it. He even taught Haile Selassie. His personal tutor. William Leo Hansberry, read his work. Afri uh, um, uh, Africa and the, oh, 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 the Africans. I think it's called Africa, yeah, the Africans. As seen through the eyes of, cl of classical writers. Read it. The Africans. William Leo Hansberry, the Africans, as seen through the eyes of classical writers. So he went to the historical record to see how people in ancient history perceived black people. To read their writings. And it's all in his work. Read it. But don't, don't pronounce judgment or talk about things you haven't read. A subject matter which you have not studied. See, the problem with being a more... Oh, hold on, forget. So those are names that tried to reestablish our minds or reconnect our minds to our African history. But they didn't try to assume thought control over us or authority over us. You understand what I'm saying? They didn't try to define things for us. They said, look, I did the research. Here you go. Do with it what you will. That's it. That's respect. But when you take, and I'm going to step on some toes. When you take a noble Jew Ali, even a Elijah Muhammad, a Louis Farrakhan, or all these people who have attempted to assume some sort of authority over us, there is nothing that they have sought to reconnect our minds to that has any real basis in fact and historical validity and historical veracity. However, I'm not going to denounce the actual contributions that have been made by some of the persons I named. Whatever contribution you make, you should be given credit for it. But whatever miseducation you proliferate, you should be called on it. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter who you are. If you miseducate, whether on purpose or by accident, redress should be made to you. Okay? So, with that said, after slavery, you had a group of people with amnesia. And you had opportunists come in and try to fill that void, try to fill that vacuum with their own manufactured prescription about who we were. And you got to remember, whoever, whoever was the author of the information or whoever prepared the information were the same people preparing your mind. That's a hell of a thing to give to somebody. That's a lot of power to give to somebody. Okay, you say it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I'm just going to believe you and not check you. That's religion. I'm not going to fact check you. That's religion. And one of the one of the people who did that, not the only one, but just one of many people who did this not long after slavery was a man who later became known as Noble Jew Ali. Okay? Noble Jew Ali was one of those men who sought to fill in that vacuum and attempted to inform us Black people, former slaves of America, 
he attempted to inform us of who we were and where we came from. And he did that back in the 1920s. The problem is that you have a sizable contingency of black people in, uh, throughout our respective communities that still to this very day in 2016, about 1923 to 2016, who still hold for his teachings to be true. In 2016, in 2016, with the advent of the internet, the information age, access to all kinds of knowledge, all kinds of archives, all kinds of primary evidence. In 2016, you have black people living throughout our respective communities wearing these red fezzes, calling themselves Moors, subscribing to a worldview that was furnished them by this brother of ours who calls himself Noble Ju Ali. I'm not going to even say what he was born as. You know, his, his so-called, quote-unquote, government name. I don't think, I hate when black people try to do that to each other. If the man changed his name, respect the fact that he changed his name. He changed his name to, no, I'm not going to call Muhammad Ali Cassius Clay. All right, Noble Ju Ali changed his name. And his name, he changed his name from one name to Noble Ju Ali. So, with that said, uh, I find it as a purveyor of knowledge and as a, as a teacher of my people, I find it problematic that there are still African people living throughout our respective communities who are not only themselves miseducated, but they are still seeking to miseducate and indoctrinate others in their miseducation. And they become, they are offended by African minds that are capable of thinking for themselves, and who reject their worldview, who reject the teachings of Noble Ju Ali out of hat, as we should, as we're going to see here today, why we should. So, uh, Bebe with the Fez, that's what I'm going to call you from now on, Bebe with the Fez. Man, you talking about the <laughs> Yeah, now he's Bebe with the Fez now. Bebe with the Fez, you told me to get my scholarship up. Well, after today, we're going to see how up my scholarship got. So I now already know how I do. You understand? You're about to find out how I do. So now we're going to deal with this. We're going to deal. We're going to go into the Circle 7 Quran. Oh. I wish I had a, a copy with me. But you can read it online. You can just download the PDF. It's on there word for word. Word for word that's in the book. It's word for word that's in the PDF. And any of you watching who want to see if, if I'm telling the truth, go right now to Google and download the PDF, the, um, the Circle 7 Quran, Morris Science Temple. Real talk. Okay? Download it. And you're going to see I'm not making up anything I say to you today. Nothing. Okay? Now, we are going to see this man, Noble Ju Ali, when he furnished black People, when he furnished the black community in Newark, New Jersey, when he furnished them, or Jersey, Chicago, when he furnished them with this Circle 7 Quran that these Moors of the Moorish Science Temple still subscribe to and still believe. When he did that, did he, was he successful in restoring our minds to our former identity? of who we are. Because if he was, that means that we are in fact Moors. Okay? Children of Moabites. From the land of Canaan. Because this is what he taught. If he was successful in reestablishing our minds, now, if he was, if he, re if he established our minds to a false doctrine. If, he, if, if, if Noble Ju Ali connected our minds, the minds of black America, if Noble Ju Ali connected the minds of black America to a false doctrine, then his efforts 
were either unsuccessful or successful, depending on how you look at it. If he wanted to fool black people so he could rule black people, then he was successful. Marginally, because there are, there are, there's a sizable amount of American blacks who live outside of America as well, even in the Caribbean. You got people in the Caribbean who, and probably in Africa too, who, hold on, who wear that fence and are part of the Moorish Science Temple. So he may have been marginally successful. But if his effort was to accurately reestablish our minds as black Americans, as American Africans, if his purpose and intent was to reestablish our minds accurately to our historical past, then I have to tell you, he failed. He failed. He failed and he failed miserably. And therefore, all of you Moors who still uh, 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 try to proliferate his teachings and still subscribe to his teachings, you are failing miserably as we speak. And that's your choice to do that. But it's also my choice to come in front of this camera and speak truthfully and show you the evidence and let you judge for yourself. You don't have to believe anything that I say. I don't deal with religion. I'm going to let you judge the evidence. And then you come to your own conclusion. As your brother, I'm obligated to respect your mind. Enough. Whether you, real talk, if you're a Hebrew Israelite, if you're a Moor, if you're a Christian, comedic, whatever you are, as your brother, I'm going to respect your mind enough to present the evidence to you and let you judge for yourself. That's all I'm here for. So now we're going to get to our identity. Because, because it's a war. All this is a war. That's why you got all these clans out here. The Hebrew Israelites, the comedic community, the Christian. It's a war for your identity. Why? Because what? where was your identity held? In your mind. It's a war for your mind. So we're going to see who win in this war today. Is the Moorish Science Temple of America under the rubric of Noble Jew Ali's um, Circle 7 Quran? Are they winning the war for our minds? Or are we, Africans, Africans, black nationalists, African freedom fighters, whatever you want. Are we Africans? Are we winning the war for the minds? Because that's what it's all about. Remember what Stephen Biko said. The greatest weapon in the hand of the oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. And like Dr. Leonard Jeffrey says, the greatest weapon in the hand of the liberator is the mind of the oppressed. So it's a war for your mind. And anytime I pull out this word right here, you already know what it is. So let's go for the identity war right now. Okay. About identity wars. This is an identity war. That's right. So when you look in the mirror, I want you to know who's looking back at you. Okay? Now what Noble Drew Ali and what Bebe with the fans, <laughs> Tahaka Bay, who calls himself Tahaka Bay. What, and, and Lord Abba, what they want you to believe is, y'all wish you had, what Lord Abba, what Eileen Bay, what um, uh, Tahaka Bay, who already said Bay Bay with the Feds, um, what, uh, who else? Um, what all of these Moors want you to believe is that these people, that you're looking at in this cotton field in the south of America, they want you to believe that those are not African people. That is what they want you to believe. They want you to believe that these are not African people. Please okay? Not, not at all. They want you to believe that these are not African people. So that we have to... Huh? You can't hit the TV with I didn't touch it. Do all right, all right. Okay. Now, this is what he wants you to believe. This is what they want you to believe. They want you to believe that these black people on this slave plantation are not African people, and that we have had the 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 uh, the wool pulled over our eyes, right, or the cotton pulled over our eyes, so we ignorant, right? So now everybody's claim is, you know, we indigenous to America, and we we were never enslaved. And, uh, and, 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 and it's a false narrative. This is what they want you to believe. But now, 
okay, no problem. That's what they want you to believe. But what are they putting in place today? So we're going to ask the question. Are the descendants of enslaved blacks in America the descendants of Canaan and or Mesopotamia? We have to ask that question. If we're dealing with the Moorish Science Temple of America, we have to ask that question. Why do we have to ask that question? Because we're going to go straight to the Holy Quran of the Moorish, of the Moor, the name of the actual name of the book is called the Holy Quran of the Moorish Holy Temple of Science. And not, every, not this other thing they've been saying. This is the actual name. The Holy Quran of the Moorish Holy Temple of Science, Circle 7. Now, divinely prepared by noble Juali. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Divinely prepared by the, by the noble prophet Juali. Okay? So, he's a prophet. Okay, I got no problem with that. And it was divinely prepared. I don't know what made it divinely prepared as opposed to being uh, 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 profanely prepared. Okay? Um, no, by Juali. Now, who guided him? Because it says it right on the cover of the Quran. Uh oh. This is what makes it divine. It says, by the guiding of his father God, Allah. So now we know that the divinity, the divinity conferred upon this book comes from his father God, Allah. Okay? Now, he, according to him, Allah is the great God of the universe. Okay? So hold on, hold on, hold on. So hold on. the purpose for it? is to redeem man, not the black man, not the white man, not the Asian man, just man. So apparently this book is for everybody and anybody. That's what it's for, to, to redeem man from his sinful and fallen state of humanity back to the highest plane of life with his father God, Allah. Yeah, cool. So, so this, is a, this is a universal um, a manual. It's for everybody. It's not just for black people. Okay, so, I mean, me personally, my thing is this. If you're going to be redeeming our mind because we just got off the slave plantation and you're going to reconnect our minds and redeem our minds, then don't you think you need to give us something that's exclusively for black people? Because slavery in America was our exclusive experience. I'm not saying other people weren't enslaved like the Irish and the Native Americans. They were. Other people were enslaved too, like the Irish Navy, well, indentured servant too, whatever you want to call it. But I'm saying, it, this book here says it's for humanity. So it's for everybody. It ain't just for black people. So right then and there, I'm going to have a problem with it. That's me personally. So let's go to chapter 47 of the Holy Quran of the Moorish Holy Temple of Science. Chapter 47, Egypt. They define Egypt as being the capital empire of the dominion of Africa. Okay? The dominion of Africa. The capital empire of the dominion of Africa. Okay. I ain't got no problem with that. Number one. What does he say? The inhabitants of Africa are the descendants of the ancient Canaanites from the land of Canaan. Stop. Put the cam on me. That's the first thing you just, you just heard. The inhabitants of Africa are the descendants of the ancient Canaanites from the land of Canaan. Now, I don't even have to go any further into this lecture. Because even a first grade student knows that science says life, human life developed in Africa. Its gestation period was in Africa. It came into being in Africa. That's what the evidence says. That's what the DNA evidence says. That's what the osteological evidence says. That's what the hematological evidence says. That's what the, hist that's what the histological evidence says. The linguistic evidence even says. All of the evidence says that man was born in Africa. If you listen to Ivan Van Sertima, what did he say? Mankind has six stages. Six sequences. The first three sequences was born, lived, and died in Africa. The, left, the last three sequences left Africa, exiting through the Straits of, or through the Malta or the Suez or the Straits of Gibraltar or the Isthmus of the Suez. Yes, the, is, the Isthmus of the Suez. Okay? Now, 
Yeah, if you know what an isthmus is, look it up. I S T H M U S. Isthmus. Anyway, he goes on to say, old man Kush and his family. So first of all, he thinks Noble Juali thought Kush was an old man. So now they're speaking anthropomorphically about countries. That's like me saying old man America. Or 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 um or old man Europe. So that should tell you just how archaic the thinking is just in just in disseminating the information. Old man Kush and his family. As if to see now you're back to mythology. He wants you to believe, according to Noble Juali in the more science temple of America, there was an old man named Kush. So you're gonna hold on. So you're gonna you're going to reestablish the identity of black people using more mythology, using a myth? Really? Noble Juali, really? Lord Abba, really? Bebe with the feds, really? That's how you're going to reestablish African identity, black minds, by using a myth, another myth. Okay. Old man Kush. Now, I didn't write this. That's Noble Juali prepared that. Because they're going to say Noble Juali didn't write it. They're going to say he prepared it. That's, they love to say that. He's not the author. He prepared it. it says it right there. Right? It says, divinely prepared by noble Juali. By noble prophet Juali. By the guiding of his father. So it tells you who guided him. It tells you he prepared it. But it don't tell you who wrote it. So you want me to believe in something and I don't know nothing about the author. I can't even call noble Juali the author. He just prepared it. Now, what do you mean by prepared? Being that you can't explain that, <laughs> Father, I'm concerned he authored it. Here we go. His foe man Kush and his family are the first inhabitants of Africa who came from the land of Canaan. His father Ham. <laughs> so now they're back to the Ham thing. Stop. Put it back on me. So now they're back to the Ham thing. Anybody that's been studying African history for the past 25 years already know that when you're dealing with Ham, you're dealing with the Bible. Go ahead. You're dealing with the Bible, so this is more Christianity. Bust this shit wide open. Shit. This is more Bible bullshit. Circle, the Holy Quran of the Moorish Holy Science Temple is Bible bullshit. I gotta say, just based on this, based on that alone, the fact that they're talking about ham. Ham comes out of what? Ham comes out of the Noah story, the Noah flood story, which is gonna be important. We're gonna have to deal with flood stories in a minute. So Ham comes out of the Noah flood story. The Noah flood story is what? Biblical literature. That's a biblical narrative. So here, Noble Ju Ali is refurnishing recently freed slaves with an extension, with further, he's, he's, he's furnishing them with more Bible bullshit and trying to reestablish our minds. So you're automatically disqualified. Err, uh -uh, draw X over the Holy Quran. Unacceptable, inadmissible for free slaves. We do not, we do not deal with ham. We don't eat pork. <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right? His father Ham and his family were second. Oh my God. Then came the word Ethiopia. Okay? Which means the demarcation line of the dominion of a Mexim. The first two in divine name of Africa. Stop. Stop. The fact that Noble Ju Ali prepared a book for you, for, for black people in America, Noble Ju Ali prepared a book for black people in America that told them that the word, that tells us that the word Ethiopia means the demarcation line of the dominion of a Mexim. Well, Noble Ju Ali should have took a class on should have took a class on classical Greece, on, on classical Greek, or even coined Greek. The word Ethiopia does not mean demarcation line. Not between the Bronx and Harlem, not between Harlem and Brooklyn. The word Ethiopia don't mean that. So now you're going to try to reestablish the minds of recently freed slaves with first, with first, Got me lisping <laughs> through my lisp. <laughs> I'm just like, I want to just beat you in the head with my drumstick, man. How dare 
dare you try to pass this off for knowledge to black people? How dare you? How dare you? Well, it's successful. You got some. Because they stuck on stupid. Because they, they stuck on stupid. And you're going to get unstuck today. You're going to get unstuck today. Okay? His father Ham and his family were second. Okay? Then came the word Ethiopia, which means the deal. I didn't write this. Shaka Amos did not write that. So don't put it on me. All right? This is from Noble Ju Ali. Noble Ju Ali is telling you that the word Ethiopia means the demarcation line of the dominion of a Mexim. I want you right now, I want you right now, stop listening to me, go on the computer, go to Google, and find out what the, or go to Edom, go to Edomon online, find out what the etymology of the word Ethiopia means, and see if it says anything about demarcation line. If it doesn't, if you can't, look at the dictionary, look at Wikipedia, go to the encyclopedia, I don't, Britannica. Look at the word Ethiopia and see if it says anywhere that the definition of the word Ethiopia means demarcation line. So we're supposed to be stupid because of a big fez on your head and a tassel and because Noble Ju Ali wore a nice robe. What about those of us who, who know the real meaning of the word Ethiopia? What about us? We don't matter, we don't count, or the real definition doesn't count? Meaning burnt of skin from the Greek, Ethiops, burnt of skin. Ethiop, look it up. You lucky I didn't put that there. I should have put it there. But I figured uh, we, we above first grade. You know, but I mean, I guess I should have put it there. My bad. All right, back to the, uh, here you go. Okay, so we're going to deal with this. It says, the inhabitants, we're going to deal with number one. The inhabitants of Africa are the descendants of the ancient Canaanites from the land of Canaan. Well, we're going to see that right now, if that's true. This, let me stop yelling. <laughs> this is from, bang, 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 bang. This is from the U.S. National Library of Medicine, the National Institutes of Health. Okay? I want you to know what you're looking at. Hold on. Put this down. Put it, I'm going to start timing myself. Put it up here in the corner. I'm going to start right here in the corner. U.S. National Library of Medicine. National Institute of Health. Shaka didn't write this. I want you to see what it is. Okay? This is science. See the word? Science. Author manuscript. Available in PMC 2010, September 29th. So this is as recent as 2010. Six years ago. I think that biology and um, genetics... In 2010, kind of, it's come a long way. So I think we could trust 2010 information as opposed to something written in 1923 trying to tell us where we come from. Okay? So let's check it out. The genetic structure and history of Africans and African Americans. This is a report they did. Published online 2009, April 30th. See it? Right there. This is from Science, 2009, May 22. That's Science Magazine. That's why it's there. Okay? I want you to see that. I'm not making this up. The genetic structure and history of Africans and African Americans. Okay? Here we go. Let's see what it says about our DNA history and where we come from. Let's see if we said we come from Canaan. All right, here you go. The genetic structure and history of African and African Americans. We'll come right here. Do you see this, Sonetta? So the next time a Moor tried to tell you you come from Canaan, read this to him. The ancestry of African Americans is, what's this word here? Predominantly. You know what that word means? Predominantly? Do you know what that word predominantly means? Do you know what that word predominantly means? I just heard an eight-year-old shout out the next bedroom. They just shout out what it means. The majority. Most. Okay? Majority. Most. Predominantly. Predominates. Let's go. The ancestry of African Americans is predominantly from Niger Kordofanian, 71%. Put it back on me. Niger Kordofanian. That is the genetic structure and history of Africans and American Africans. 71% of our DNA comes from Niger Kordofanian language speaking peoples. You got to know where those people are found. Okay? Now, 
Niger called Ophanian. There is no place called Niger in Canaan. There is no place called Kordofan in Canaan. And I forgot to put the map for Kordofan in there. You're lucky. Okay? These are nowhere near Canaan. So the majority of what we are does not come from Canaan. Put it back on me. 71%. So I'll read it again for you. The ancestry of African Americans is predominantly from Niger Kordofanian. 71%. 71% is not 60, it ain't 65. That's a lot more than half. Most of what we are, with all of the miscegenation and the rape, and all of that stuff that we went through, most of what we are comes from Niger Kordofanian. For all you black, for, I'm going to say it, for all you dumb black niggas, I don't care if you like it, if I say it or not, running all over Facebook, talking about we from America originally. You dumb motherfuckers. All you got to do is research and read. Read. I know that the first inhabitants of America were black people. I know that. I've seen the, the 411 on that. I'm not talking about that. They're talking about our DNA. Those of us walking around today, our DNA, 71% of it is Niger Kordofanian. That is Africa. You understand me? It's Africa. Stop letting people with a fez and a goddamn tassel tell you something because they look cute. They're not, how you going to call yourself the Moorish Science Temple and it's a science? You ain't even dropping this. You should call yourself the Moorish Clown Temple of America. The Moorish Coon Temple of America. That's what you should call yourselves. Real talk. you lucky I wasn't at that debate. Debating. Real talk. And I'm, I told you, what you get today is a crumb. What you get today is a crumb because y'all been talking so much shit over the past few years and I've been trying to be cool and trying to be easy. I said, let me focus on my music. Let me do da 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 But nah, y'all want to keep calling me out. Every time you call me out, I'm going to crush you. I don't care what your religion is. I don't care what your doctrine is. You done. <laughs> don't, even, don't even let my names escape your mouth. And that's real. Dummies, you're a bunch of dummies. And then those of you following behind dummies are equally dummies. Your DNA, put it back over there so they can see it. The genetic structure and history of Africans and, Amer and African Americans. The ancestry of African Americans is predominantly from, is predominantly from Niger Kordofanian, 71%. European, 13%. And uh, that's the rape. That's the rape right there. That's the rape and the coonery. So if you take the rape, put it like this. So if you take all of the rape, as much as they was raping our woman and making babies. And if you take all of the cool Negroes that had to have themselves a white wife or all of the cool Negroes that had to have themselves a white husband, like they're getting ready to make this movie about the white, about the white man and the black woman in um, North Carolina who was treated badly for getting married. So they want to make it all romantic now between the white man and the black woman. You understand? Oh, yeah, it's a big movie. They hit it down. Oh, it's crazy. It's coming out, right? So for all of the rape and the miscegenation, and the coonery that makes black, that, that forced black people to be with white people sexually. The only thing you can measure in us as a whole, 13% European. What is that? 13%? That explains all of the dumb shit we do. Right. All of the dumb shit we do, that's that 13%. Yeah. And now you know why they say the number 13 is an unlucky number. All right? Huh. That's for you. Woo. Now you know why the number 13 is an unlucky number, because that's your European ancestry. 13% according to the DNA. Not, not Shaka Amos. Don't put it on Shaka Amos. All I want to say is, yeah. why they wake this motherfucker up? No, they... Leave Shaka the No, alone, no, no. Come on. This is, a, this is a crumb. All you get today is a crumb. And I'm going to show you what I do with a crumb. So that you can imagine what's coming. R.I.P. Morris Clown Temple of America. Morris Coonery Temple of America. R.I.P. Here you go. Feel me? Here it is. The ancestry of African Americans is predominantly Niger Kordofanian. 71%. Hold up, hold up, what's up? What's up? up. I can see it right now. Yeah. What they gonna say when they see this? Oh, soccer gay, soccer homo, soccer faggot. But they not gonna deal with none of your fucking scholarship that you talked about because they wanna deviate. Yeah. 
and take the people away from what you're saying. So we don't want to hear that bullshit. We don't want to hear he's gay. We don't want to hear he's a homo. Motherfuckers, we want to hear you debunk the science. That's what we want to know. <laughs> it's called DNA. Michael, put it back over here. Huh? It's called DNA, right? You know what DNA stands for? I don't even know what DNA stands for. De de Deoxyribonucleic acid or whatever that's Okay, here we go. Turn it around. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Just What's up? You go? All right. Yeah, that's how they, they going to get it. Now they getting it. I don't want to read nothing. They getting it. You're going to get it. All that shit you was talking, here you go. All right? The, the ancestry of African Americans is predominantly from Niger Kordofanian, 71%. European 13% and other African 8% populations. Now, why is that important? That's important because out of that 71%, they always came and we come from Morocco. Right? They already say we came from Morocco. Most of the slaves here came from Morocco. That's what they want to tell you. That's why we Moors. Okay? This study, all right, hold on. Here we go. The ancestry of African Americans is predominantly Niger Kordofanian, 71%, European 13%, and other African 8% populations. Although admixture levels varied considerably among individuals, which means that even this 13% might not be correct. It might be some of us that only got 8%, 7%. Some might have 15 and 16%, like Brother Reggie, right? And congratulations to his brother on getting married. You understand what I'm saying? So, but this is what you got to look at. 71%. Feel me? 71%. My dude. So if you're talking about 71%, Niger Kordofanian, that's who we are, bro. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me ask you a question. In this DNA study, do you see anything that relates to Canaan? Anything that relates to Canaan or Mesopotamia? All right, so put it, put it back on me real fast. Moors, I want y'all to get into the DNA that includes Sharif too, because you like to come up like you got the knowledge and you don't, okay? Dude, real talk, I put it out there. I go, Sharif, I go get you any day of the week. I am no offense to Brother Reggie. I'm not Brother Reggie. Real talk. That's real. And I do it for free. Straight up. You hear? Yo, 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 yo. You what? know what? Fuck that. What? Fuck that. Matter of fact, being that you said that, if y'all really about the people, if anybody, but we don't, now nah, we don't just want anybody. We want your best, and we will do it for free. We want your best. That's all. We want the best. Come on. Here you go, because I'm tired of all of this stupidness. Let's go. This study, came back over here. Yeah. This study helps tease apart the complex evolutionary history of Africans and African Americans, aiding both anthropological and genetic epidemiological studies. Dude, do you see this? The genetic structure and history of Africans and African Americans, author manuscript available in PMC 20. Come on, man. Stop playing. Y'all need to stop playing with black people's minds and stop miseducating them. Your feds is done today. Trust me. Here you go. It says right here, the inhabitants of Africa are the descendants of the ancient Canaanites from the land of Canaan. That's from the Circle 7 Quran. Now, hold on. It said that we are Niger Kordofanian. That's what the DNA says. The Niger African language is Niger Kordofanian. The Niger Kordofanian family has two branches Niger Congo and Kordofanian. The Kordofanian tongues are spoken in Sudan and form five small groups Kualib. Tigali, Tolori, Tumtum, and Katla. Okay? That's the Kodofanian. I wish I had a map of Africa right here. I'm going to find one. Real talk. To show you where it is. Are you going to give me a map of Africa? No, oh, man. I thought you were going to put up that map. Can you put a map of Africa on the screen real fast? All right, cool. All right, here we go. It says, Niger Congo is an enormous branch whose languages are found throughout South and Central Africa and in most of West Africa below the Sahara. Now, Morocco, now correct me if I'm wrong. Is Morocco below the Sahara? <laughs> no, it's not. So, so, if, so, if, so hold on. <laughs> right? None of these languages are from Morocco. These languages that, that our DNA dates back to do not come from Morocco. So why do you keep trying to say 
We come from Morocco. Now I'm going to tell you something. When you, do the, the, when you look further into the DNA study, the fact is, is that there are a very small, there were a very small percentage of us, or, 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 or of, of, of Africans who got caught up in the slave trade that did in fact come from Morocco. But when you see, when you see the, when you see the uh, percentage of how small it was, it's damn near not even worth talking about. So you only need dead, damn sure ain't no 71%. You're lucky if you even get to the double digits. So you need to stop playing with yourselves and stop trying to play with our minds. You heard? Now, now mind you, that wasn't even the beginning of the lecture. That was just to set something straight. This is the beginning of the lecture. R.I.P. Morris Science Temple. Oh, no more shit. moronic lies. Oh, okay? Shit. That wasn't even the beginning of the lecture. This is the beginning of the lecture. Okay? <laughs> Since so y'all want to play. Tahaka! There ain't no Tahaka. Bebe. Bebe with the feds. Okay? <laughs> Bebe with the feds. He lost that. Tahaka, you can't. You got to earn that. You want to be called Tahaka? You got to take that feds off, first of all. Uh. You feel me? Woo. Tahaka was not a Canaanite. Tahaka was not Mesopotamian. He was an African. A pitch black African. You understand? You do understand, you do understand what Africa means and where it is. He was not from a Mexican. He was from Africa. Okay? Now, now hold on, to be fair, to be quite fair, at the time when Harker lived, there wasn't no place called Africa. So I'm gonna be fair with you about that one. So I can't even say that. I'm gonna be fair. I'm gonna be real fair. But we know what we mean when we say Africa. We're talking about what land mass. So let's not be stupid. We know what landmass we're talking about along the Nile River. Okay? Upper Nile. Tahaka was from the Upper Nile region. He wasn't from Canaan and he wasn't from Mesopotamia. So stop that. This is the beginning of the lecture. Since y'all want to play, y'all want to play, you don't, you don't know what you're playing with. Now, this is something I prepared for Noble Juali out of respect. I wasn't going to read it, but I'm going to read it anyway. To my brother, Noble Ju Ali, from your brother Shaka Amos, you did the best you could with what you had for your people, for our people, at a time when our collective memories have been wiped clean, at a time when we no longer possessed any knowledge of our historical or divine selves. You sought to raise us with the only knowledge accessible to someone such as yourself at that time, under very hostile circumstances. For that, we honor you, and we say thank you for your efforts. However... Noble Jew, your offspring, your progeny have failed to advance, to move beyond the errant historical paradigms you left behind. In their religious fervor for the sake of tradition, they have turned their backs on facts, truth, opting out in its stead for falsehood, historical obsolescence, subjective jurisprudence, and linguistic deference to our historical adversaries, contextually speaking. In reaching back for our origins, they have decided to stop off and linger in a historical spiritual concoction manufactured and prepared for us by those not to be found amongst us, by those who were just as historically illiterate as was yourself. Yes, because Noble Drew Ali was historically illiterate. It is time to greatly disturb your offspring so they may perhaps once again awaken which is what I believe you wanted for us more than anything else. If this means that we must discard some, most, or even all of what you imparted to us, then in the name of my art, so be it, and with your blessings. Okay? So just for the Moors, I asked Noble Drew Ali for his permission to throw away his teachings because we know they're incorrect. If what he really wants for us is to wake up, then that's the stuff we got to deal with. The facts, the truth, and the science that's going to wake us up and let us know what time it really is. With, who, with our identity. So let's keep it moving. Now, I want to establish something from the outset. Enslaved Africans in America, I didn't say enslaved Moors. I said enslaved Africans in America. Were t I didn't say enslaved Hebrew Israelites. Uh -oh. Now I can say enslaved Muslims because some of the slaves were actually Muslim. They were actually Muslim. But that don't make it, that don't mean that Islam is our religion. It just means that they got brainwashed before they came over here. That's all in Africa. That's all. That's all it means. Okay? Enslaved Africans in America, but they were still Africans, whether they were Muslim or not. Enslaved Africans in America were taught to love Jesus, 
on the slave plantation. Therefore, can you, can you co-sign this? As long as you are black and love Jesus, you are psychologically still on the slave plantation. Hell yeah, all day, every day. See this right here? Those are our ancestors on the slave plantation. I know some of you are so ashamed of slavery and what happened to us in this country that y'all want to disconnect from them with everything you got. You don't want to be called black. You don't want to be called African. You don't want to be called anything that has to do with them. Fuck you. Okay? Those are our ancestors. I got nothing but love for them. Okay? That's not their fault. What happened to us? They survived and they did the look at us out there as babies. See that? They love their babies. Okay? Now, and where was Allah? <laughs> okay? If your Allah is the universal God, <laughs> you heard me? Here we go. Now, we just established enslaved Africans in America were taught to love Jesus on the slave plantation. Therefore, as long as you are black and love Jesus, you are, you are psychologically still on the slave plantation. Question, does the Holy Quran of the Moorish Holy Temple of Science, also known as the Circle 7 Quran, incarcerate black minds in the Bible? Well, we already know that. We already know that it does. Why do we know? Because if you go back to part one, they still trying to push Ham, his father Ham. So we already established that the Holy Circle 7 Quran incarcerates black minds in the Bible. But we ask the question again here because of the statement just made about Jesus. Enslaved Africans in America were taught to love Jesus on the slave plantation. Therefore, as long as you are black and love Jesus, you are psychologically still on the slave plantation. That goes to all my relatives who go to church on Sundays, including my sisters. That goes to everybody who goes to church on Sunday or Wednesday or Saturday, depending on when you go to church. All right? If you're still in that Bible and you still love Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you are black, you are still on the slave plantation. Let's establish that. Okay? Now, we're going to ask a question. Did the majority of our black ancestors in 18th century early America, enslaved or otherwise, love Jesus? We're going to answer that right now. Okay? Check this out. From, the, from a, an historical account of the rise and progress of the colonies of South Carolina, 1779, Alexander Hewitt, first historian for South Carolina and Georgia, doctor of divinity degree, University of Edinburgh, that's in England, remained loyal to the king. Okay? Now check it out. Look what he says in his book. In his book, An Historical Account of the Rise and Progress of the Colonies of South Carolina, he says... The Negroes of that, count, of that country, he took, at the time, they considered the colonies countries. So they were talking about South Carolina and um, uh, uh, he was talking about South Carolina. Okay, he's talking about South Carolina. Oh, and Georgia. He's talking about South Carolina and Georgia, but primarily of South Carolina and this one right here. The Negroes of that country a few only accepted are to this day as great strangers to Christianity. That means as late as the beginning of the 19th century, black, as late as the end of the 18th century and the beginning of the 19th century, most black people enslaved in America were strangers to Christianity. We're talking about the slaves that came over on the slave ships. They were strangers to Christianity. That's a document right there. You want to know where this came from? This came from the book Slave Religion, The Invisible Institution in Antebellum South by Dr. Albert Jordy Roberto. He graduated from Yale University in 74, and he's the Henry W. Putnam Professor of Religion at Princeton University. That's a top-notch top scholar. And look at this picture. That's a black man. Get his book. Slave religion, the invisible institution in the antebellum South. Most of the slaves did not love Jesus. Go ahead. As, as, late as, the, as late as the end of the 18th century and as early as the beginning of the 19th century, most of the slaves, most of the enslaved Africans in America were strangers to Christianity. Put it on me for a minute. I know most of you Moors are actually stupid and dumb. Look up the word stranger. Because you don't believe me. Look at the word stranger. 
most of them, most of the enslaved Africans in America did not love Jesus. So let's be clear on that. Okay? I just showed you the documentation. Okay? According to Alexander Hewitt, right there who I just showed you, according to Alexander Hewitt, the first historian for South Carolina and Georgia, the answer is no. They did not love Jesus as they were strangers to Christianity. Just say no. Okay? Check it out. This is the book, Slave Religion, an Invisible Institution in the Antebellum South. Get it. Read the documentation. We're dealing with straight up documents here. Since more, I thought you said Moors love documents. Ain't they always shoving documents in people's faces? Yep. So if the Moors are always shoving documents in people's faces, why didn't they see that documentation that says the Negroes of the countries, South Carolina, right, and Georgia, a few only accepted, are to this day as great strangers to Christianity? I wonder why they didn't see that documentation, because they love documents, right? Hold on. Did our enslaved black ancestors in the 19th century early America love Jesus? So we just went from the 18th century to the 19th century. Let's read from the book, Slavery, Civil War, and Salvation, African American Slaves and Christianity. And we're going to find out, and we're going to show you who the Moors really are, okay? This is, this is page one, introduction, first paragraph, Dr. Daniel L. Fountain, Associate Professor of History, Department Head, History, Political Science, Religious and Ethical Studies and Sociology, PhD, okay, Early American History to 1876, the University of Mississippi, 1999. He got his master's at North Carolina and his BA at Stetson. Okay, so this is a PhD, okay? His book, Slavery, Civil War, and Salvation, African American Slaves and Christianity, 1830 to 1870. Now, this is the height of slavery in America. Check it out. This is what the book says. More precise, oh, this is what he said. Actually, it's from the book. It's from the introduction. Um, more precisely, my research into slave religious practices has forced me to consider the possibility that while most 19th century African American slaves had some form of religious belief, would you read that, read that last part? They were not Christians. They were not Christians. So now we're talking, because you want to talk, hold on, y'all want to disassociate yourself from the slaves on the plantation because you think that they were dumb, stupid, and this, that, and the other. But they were smart enough not to be Christian, Woo! to be Africans. Woo! Hold on a second. So the documentation shows, they were, hold, let's go. Slavery, Civil War, same book. All right? A qualitative survey presented in Chapter 1 found that only 38% of the, oh, listen to this now. You're going to want to follow this. I'm not going to repeat this. A qualitative survey presented in Chapter 1 found that only 38% of slaves who left behind some form of narrative indicated that they converted to Christianity prior to emancipation. Most slaves in the late antebellum South, in the, in, 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 most slaves in the, in the late antebellum period were not Christians. That's from the book, same book, Slavery, Civil War, and Salvation by Dr. Daniel L. Fountain. Now hold on. So what did we just establish? Let's deal with it. We just established, we just established that our ancestors who were enslaved in America during the 18th century, they were not Christians. The majority of them were not Christians. Our ancestors in the 19th century, in the deep south of this country, when slavery was still in fact and coming to an end. It says late antebellum period, period were not Christians. It says most slaves in the late antebellum period were not Christians. So you got Christians, I mean you got slaves, enslaved Africans in America, the majority of whom were not Christians. Now, it says, it also says, 38% of the slaves who left behind some form of narrative did convert to Christianity before they were free. So let's find out who these 38% are. And I hope you boys are watching. Hold on, because you're going to love this. Give me that camera. I wish, yo. I hope you boys are watching this. 
Because y'all been talking so much shit, and I've been turning my head and looking the other way because I've been busy with other things. But I took a few minutes out for y'all, and y'all about to get it. <laughs> Real talk. Y'all about to get done. Over. R.I.P. Morris Shines, Temple of America. You ain't fooling no more of our babies with your dumb shit. Okay? Here we go. So it shows you, most of the slaves in America, during the late period, right before they were free, they said only 38%, now check it out, some of the slaves who converted to Christianity before they were free, these are the weak slaves. These are the weak Africans, right? These are the ones that wanted to become, that wanted to worship Jesus, right? They, I don't even want to call them weak, but for this lecture, we're going to call them weak. I hope they forgive me because I'm trying to prove a point. But 38% of the ones who left narratives did indicate they converted to Christianity before slavery ended. We're going to find out who that 38% is. Since you more love to talk all that shit. Yo, let's go. There you go. So I asked the question. How many of our enslaved African ancestors in the U.S. left narratives? Because he said 38% of the ones that left narratives indicated they converted to Christianity before slavery ended, right? How many of those who did leave narratives convert to Christianity before emancipation? Number two. Number three, is there an exact number we can know? Well... How many slave narratives were there? 100 amazing facts about the Negro, sizing up the genre from which an Oscar favorite originated by Henry Louis Gates Jr., the Negro of all Negroes. All right? The Negro of all Negroes. Well, his faggot ass. But we're going we're gonna to rely on his research today. I'm sorry. I, his punk ass. I'll call him a punk. Probably a fact too, but whatever. Anyway, um... He is the Alphonse Fletcher University professor and director of the Hutchins Center for African and African American Research at Harvard University. He's a Harvard professor. And this is his article, How Many Slave Narratives Were There? Because all we got to do to find out how many, black, how many enslaved Africans converted to Christianity before slavery, we got to find 38%. See it? Look. Right here, only 38% of slaves who left behind some form of narrative indicated that they converted to Christianity. You need to watch this because you're going to love how I do this. Watch. Okay, no worries. Do you? You always do me that. Anyway, here you go. So, I know. Check it out. Now, he, his article says this. This is Henry Louis Gates Jr. talking, not Shaka Mokes. Now, thanks to my friend, Professor William L. Andrews, and his colleagues at Doc South, an online archive hosted by the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, we can put an exact number out there, 204. That's right. From the height of the slave trade to the end of the Civil War in 1865, 102 known book-length slave narratives were written, with another 102 written by former slaves after the war. So, we got 102 and 102, okay? So that's 104, right? I mean, 204, because we says right here, he says 38% of slaves who left behind narratives. So he just said, in this article, 102 known book-length slave narratives were written with another 102 written by former slaves after the war. Altogether, that's 204, okay? Remember, only 38% of the slaves who left behind some form of narrative indicated that they converted to Christianity prior to emancipation. Uh-oh. Number two, what then is the exact number of slaves who left narratives that indicated they converted to Christianity before emancipation? Number three, the answer is 38% of 204 equals 77.52. So now, you got 78 slaves... Put, I wish you could put the camera back on me, but I'll do it. So that means now, that means you had 78 slaves. 78 slaves admitted in their narratives that they converted to Christianity. Okay? Out of 204 who left narratives... This is, we ain't even talking about all the slaves. We just talking about the ones that left narratives. 
out of the ones that left narratives, it's 204. Out of 204, it's 78 of them admitted they converted to Christianity before slavery came to an end. Can we find out who those 78 slaves up were? See if we could take a look. There they go. That's all 78 of them right there. Those are the slaves that converted to Christianity by the end of, by the end of slavery. I'm going to prove it to you. Or before, before slavery, I'm going to prove it to you right now. Put it back there. I'm going to prove it to you. Remember that fez, folks, so that you know you could deal, you're still dealing with a slave. When you see that fez, you're dealing with a slave. Don't forget that. All right? Look. Check it out. Here you go. Look, here you go. The whole look. Does the Circle 7 Quran free the minds of black people or does it keep them trapped in the Jesus story? Watch this, Sanetta. Look at this. The genealogy, can I have you this for this one? The genealogy of Jesus. This is, this is from, by the way, this is from the Holy Quran of the Moorish Holy Temple of Science. The genealogy of Jesus with 18 years of the events, life, works, and teachings in India, Europe, and Africa. These events occurred before he was 30 years of age. Now, what did Noble Juwali say about this? It says, these secret lessons are for all of those who love Jesus. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That means the stuff in this book are for those people who love Jesus. That's from the book itself. For those who love Jesus and desire to know about his life, works, and teachings. So when you're dealing with that fans, you're dealing with people who love Jesus. <laughs> who loves Jesus? Put the light over here. Yeah, Hold up. Who loves Jesus? Now these niggas think that they're freeing your mind from a slave plantation, but they're not telling you inside their book it said explicitly, these secret teachings are for those who love Jesus. Damn. I told you, anywhere you try to sneak, Jesus said, I'm going to do you. I don't care what religion it is, I'm going to do you. You just got done. You just did it to yourself. It's in your book. Go back. I'm going to say it again. It says right here, yeah, the Holy Quran Oh, no, it's in there. I didn't give the page. Hold on, hold on. It's in there. I just took it out. It's in there. Matter of fact, it's, yo, it, when I tell you it's in there, it's like, matter of fact, yo, it's right under the table of contents. It's before the book even gets started. It's in the book under the table of contents. Straight up. Okay? So where? A matter of fact, there it is right there. The prologue. All right. It's the prologue. They ain't even get to, yo, that's the prologue. These secret lessons are for all those who love Jesus. Damn. Stop right there. Put that cam on me for a minute. How you going to try to shove a fez on my head when I don't love Jesus? Tahaka! Bay Bay with the fez. Huh? Aline Bay. Huh? Huh? Lord Abba. Huh? How you going to try to shove a fez on my head when I don't love Jesus? It says those secret lessons are for all those who love Jesus. That's in your book. It's not in my book. So you're still on some love Jesus shit. But you want black people to think there's something revolutionary about y'all. Y'all want black people to think y'all made a break from the Bible. Still talking about ham and loving Jesus in your book. You thought I was coming for you? Dude, this PowerPoint been done. So now they can tell you, this PowerPoint been done for over three months. That's right. I've been doing other things. And this is just the surface. You ain't even going yet. Oh, no. Yeah. You think I, oh, no, I just got started. I'm still at the surface. This ain't even the real PowerPoint. I'm still at the surface. We get into the PowerPoint. I just want to walk you with me as we get to the PowerPoint. Because you will never come in front of me with a fence and talk that shit in life as long as you live. I will refer you to this video. Don't ask me what my nationality is while you're still loving Jesus. Don't ask me what my nationality is while you're still talking about Ham, Noah, and, 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 and Jet Bible stories. You gonna ask me what my nationality is and you still stuck in the Bible? Nigga, is you out your mind? My name is Shaka Amos. Not stupid. You gotta be crazy. You got. I said it. Everybody was, how come so many talk, so many people talk shit about me on YouTube, but how come they, when they see me, they don't say it, and they don't come looking for me, I'm easy to find. Because that's the one I'm waiting for, okay? So yeah, 
How are you going to come to me with the feds on your head? Are you going to come to a sister, a dumb, stupid sister that ain't got no education, ain't studied nothing, she just looking at you with your chocolate stuff thinking, oh, he's freeing my mind. You dummy, he ain't freeing your mind. He keeping you trapped in that Bible. Because his book, his own book, the Holy Quran of the Morris Science Temple in the Polar, it says, these secret lessons are for all those who love Jesus. And I got to tell you, one of my brothers, who's a more um, red pill, and I ain't calling him out, I asked him. I said, remember, you was here, we asked red pill, remember, do you love Jesus? He said, no. <laughs> All right. I love you, red. Nah, nah, okay, red is out of it. Yo, bottom line is, you cannot come to me with a feds on your head talking about Morris Science, Temple of America. You can't come to me talking about Noble Jew Ali unless you first admit to me that you love Jesus and that this book is for those who love Jesus. Because it says it says right there. Put the camera on. Because they're going to say Shaka said it. Put the camera on it. Put the camera on it, please. Yo. It says, these secret lessons are for all those who love Jesus and desire to know about his life and works and teaching. The prologue, holy, the holy Quran of the Moorish Holy Temple of Science. And you want to think that these are niggas that got off the slave plantation? Really? You really think these feds wearing motherfuckers got off the place, slave plantation? You really think that? No, they did not. They still on it. But when I'm done, they gonna come off it. I guarantee it. Throw all them feds in the garbage when I'm done. We gonna have a bonfire. Feds and Holy Circle Seven Commands. We gonna have a bonfire. <laughs> Y'all thought I was just coming after the Hebrew Israelites? Man, the Hebrew Israelites is easy. Y'all even easier. The Moors are even easier. Here you go. We're going to rock out. Come on. Here they go. There go your, hold on. There go your 78 Christians that love Jesus right there. There they go. There they go. You see them? All them feathers. There they go. Where Noble Juwadi? There he is. He said that the secret teachings he prepared are for all those who love Jesus. There they go. And they think they're off the slave plantation. Nah. They ain't off the slave plantation. And why they wearing pharaonic headwear? Ain't no pharaoh ever loved Jesus. What the hell wrong with y'all? And who that white boy up in the middle? Y'all got to explain that to me. Here we go. Boom. Yeah, for all those who love Jesus. There they go. There go some other ones. This is the Moorish Science Temple of Moorish Jews. More slaves still on the plantation, still stuck in that Bible. There they go. They ain't even call themselves Hebrew Israelites. They call themselves Jews. But don't the Hebrew Israelites always tell us that Jews are the fakes? Yep. That's what they say. So then these are, these are black fakes. These, this is what I mean when I say it's an identity war. you just coming off the slave plantation. You're trying to figure out who you are, but you got opportunists like Noble Jew Ali, opportunists like Lord Abba, opportunists like Aileen Bay, all these misguided brothers trying to tell you who you are, and they don't even know who the hell they are. My name is Shaka Amos. Here we go. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Boom. Who was guiding Noble Jew Ali? Can they be trusted? Here we go. Who was guiding Allah? I mean, who was guiding Noble Jew Ali? He tells you in his own book, he was being guided by his father God, Allah. So we got it. So I asked the question at the top. Who was guiding Noble Jew Ali? Can they be trusted? So since Allah was guiding him, we got to determine if Allah can be trusted. See, we're walking up to the PowerPoint. Okay? See? Right here. Who was guiding Noble Jew Ali? It says in his own book. He said, by the guiding of his father God, Allah, the great God of the universe. Right? It says, to redeem man from his sinful and fallen state of humanity back to the highest plane of life with his father God, Allah. So twice, Noble Jew Ali said, Allah, or whoever wrote it, said Allah was guiding Noble Jew Ali. So my question is, it's not a question is no longer. The question is no longer, can Noble Drew Ali be trusted as far as his work goes? The question is, can the person who was guiding him be trusted? And he already said in his own work that Allah was guiding him. Be careful what you ask for. Okay? 
Be careful what you ask for. Because y'all going to get it. Be careful what you ask for. Here we go. All right. We ready? Yeah. It's on. Oh, wait, cool. Here we go. Now. So now the question is no longer, the question is no longer, um, can Noble Ju Ali be trusted? The question is, can the person who was guiding Noble Ju Ali, can that person be trusted? Noble Ju Ali has established for us that Allah was guiding him. So the real question is, can Allah be trusted? We're going to find out right now. Who, what, when, where, Allah. See that? Who, what, when, where, Allah. Now, that's how we are taught to ask questions. Who, what, when, where. The problem is that that's incorrect. You're asking the questions in the wrong order if you want to get the answers. Right? Yeah, I like that. Right? Here you go. The question should be, where, when, what, who, Allah, in that order. You got to start with where. Why? Because you're dealing with a place. Everything begins and ends in a place. It has to have a location. That's why you can't be lazy in geography. When you're studying social studies and you're studying geography, you got to pay attention because everything has a place. Everything begins somewhere, takes place somewhere, and ends somewhere. All right, cool. No problem. So here we go. All right? Who, what, when, where, Allah. Over here you got Arabia. Okay? So most people, when they hear the word Allah, they automatically think of Arabia. Okay? This is what they think of, Arabia. All this right here. This is Arabia. Okay? Now, the funny thing about the Arabian Desert, however, is that the Arabian Desert is not just over here, near the Sinai area. It goes all the way over to Mesopotamia. So when you hear Allah, don't think about Allah automatically coming from um, the Levantine area, Palestine, or, uh, or even Arabia. Okay? Here we go. Arabia. Okay? Who, where, when, who, where, when, what, who, Allah. Now, what do we learn, children? Put the camera back on me. Here we go. Boom. Okay, boys and girls. What did we learn so far? So far, we learned that the Holy Circle 7 Quran tells you in its prologue that the secret teachings therein are for those who love Jesus. If you still love Jesus, then go get a fez. Join the Morris Science Temple of America because they're talking to you. If you have outgrown the Jesus story, the Morris Science Temple of America is not for you. The Fez is not for you. A noble Jew Ali in the Circle 7 Quran is not for you. It tells you in the book, the secret teachings therein are for those who love Jesus. For me, we got nothing else to talk about after that. We got nothing else to talk about. We also learned that they subscribe to the Ham Theory. Ham, uh, Ham Shem, and Japheth. Right? Noah, sons, Bible stories. So that's what we learned so far. We learned that, that the 77 or the 78 slaves who left narratives were probably Moors because they converted to Christianity before slavery ended. And the book tells you it's for those who love Jesus. I'm not making this up. I mean, goddamn, I don't got to be a rocket scientist to say if I convert to Christianity before um, the end of slavery, and somebody writes a book for those who love Jesus, then it's for me. But I'm not that slave that converted to Christianity before slavery ended. I'm that slave that held out and said, nah, nah, keep your Jesus. Fuck Jesus. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm an African. Okay? Here we go. Yeah. Real talk. Be careful what you ask for. Right. You heard? Be careful what you ask for. Real talk. <laughs> Y'all should have left me alone. I, I do this. You understand what I'm saying? I was doing this when most of y'all was first learning. You understand? Real talk. So let's get back on, on point. Here we go. Chapter 47, Egypt. Right? It said again, the inhabitants of Africa are the descendants of the ancient Canaanites from the land of Canaan. That's what it says. So look. It tells you 
that we from Canaan. Here's Canaan. Here's the map. Here's Egypt. This is Africa. Okay? All right here. This is the Nile River. That's the canopy. That's the delta. Right? Over here, the Sinai Peninsula. Okay? Then over here, you got Canaan. Or what's called today the Levant. In ancient times, all of this was Canaan. Canaan went, it stretched. It's, ge it's, ge it's, it's geographical and geopolitical borders changed over time. It would expand. It would decrease. It would expand. It would, it would um, what's the opposite of expansion? Um, I guess well, decrease. Okay? So, so now my question to you is this. My question to you is that if we are Canaanites and we come from here, then why are we worshiping? Now, you would think that Allah, if, if we are Canaanites, and that's what Noble Jew Ali said, that we are Canaanites, and his father God is Allah, therefore you're going to believe that the worship of Allah started in this region, in the Levantine region, Canaan, Moab. See Moab? They said we Moabites. So they're trying to tell you this is where we came from. Well, if we came from over here worshiping Allah, then tell me why the hell does Allah actually come from over here? All the way over here in Mesopotamia. Allah don't come from here in Canaan. Allah comes from here. Mesopotamia, Babylon, Sumer, Assyria. Sumer, right here. This is where Allah come from. All of this area right here. See this? And we're going to prove it right now. Here we go. And look where Arabia is. See it? Arabia is right here. See this? This is Arabia. So much think Allah came from here. Allah ain't come from here. Allah ain't even come from Arabia. Allah came from here. Sumer, Babylon, Asur. And I'm going to show you. Okay? I didn't say I'm going to tell you. I said I'm going to show you. Allah's Sumerian birth certificate. Welcome to the PowerPoint. Now we at the PowerPoint. Uh-oh! Now we at the PowerPoint, people. Allah's Sumerian birth certificate. Oh, there it is. Hey, yo, turn. Hold on for one minute. Yeah, all right. Because the people are saying they can't see it. And That's how I was just fixing it. Damn, I don't know. No, look. Oh, right oh, 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 oh. Trying to fix this shit. But for some reason, it's not working. All right, folks, we're just having a te technical difficulty. We'll be right back up in a second. We just want to make sure the live cast can see us. You heard? Yeah. I told you Moses was getting his work. 